So what I'm going to do today is um, a couple of things. Um, I'm joined, we were going to be joined by um, someone from Chicago, but unfortunately she's in a planning meeting and can't do it. I want to tell you a little bit about the um, games design course. Edith, where are you? You're still here. That presentation was fantastic, and I think I have a school you might like to go to. And because this is actually nailed on what you were asking about, is there anything better in secondary? This is the most exciting thing I've ever been involved with in my semi, what I'd like to call my professional career, which always makes me smile. Um, I'm joined by uh, Greg Hodgson, who's the assistant head of Chalfonts Community College, and James Mickey, who's the, I think he's the head of uh, second, Key Stage 4 English. I might be wrong. Um, and we're going to tell you a little bit about the games design course that we've been running uh, for a little while now. Let's just see how this is doing and if we can get anything back, unless Vista's going to crash on me. Um, what this is, is a course that runs, this is a part of the Creative Media Diploma. If anyone's uh, if any year 10s in the Creative Media Diploma, this is the project that that course is doing. If this crashes, I'm just going to uh, roll my eyes, but never mind. Um, so this is the project. Um, they do all sorts of other stuff. The school has a radio station. If you're familiar with Russell Proust's radio station, that sort of thing, they've bought that in there. That's a lot of their uh, stuff is based around that. Um, this is the project. It's very discreet, and it works in a certain way. Let's just see if we can get this going. If not, then let's see. I may have to close and come back in. Let's just close this and come back in. Um, what happens is, um, once a week, a guy called... Uh, there we go. Close the program. Let's do that and see what happens. Um, a guy comes down who used to work on uh, Tomb Raider. He's uh, he, uh, brilliant. We had a, a first day at Stoke Mandeville Stadium, and his opening line was, them, uh, my name's... And I used to try and kill Lara Croft for two years. He designed the artificial intelligence in Tomb Raider 2 or Tomb Raider 3 or something. That's what he did. He's now in their um, school teaching them how to do games, which is kind of pretty good, I think. I think that's kind of quite the sort of thing I'd like if I was uh, doing this. Let's just see if we can get to this game and let's get in. Um, TM game on. Let's just go to this live room and go back in and see Greg and um, James. I'm probably going to run over seven minutes, but I hope you don't mind. Um, let's wait for this to load. And all things being equal. And stop blocking entry. Yeah, I want to stop blocking entry and start my camera. Okay, so if you want to actually go into this room now and you've got a computer, you can go to that bit, <laughs> that bitly URL. And um, I had to put it that way so I could get as, as much as I can. If you go to there, that's where Greg and James are at the moment. We're going to actually do the presentation from within there. This is what happens on a Thursday night at about this time. About 7.30, to, um, about 21 students get together in a room. They're all at home. Um, and Roxana Haddad, who's not here tonight because she's doing, doing, writing a bid process in Chicago, um, runs the course from Chicago. And during the week, they've spent a day with the guy who did the Tomb Raider stuff doing a Flash game. And he's actually teaching them how to do Flash, build games, real games. Um, and then on Thursday night, they meet games designers from all around the world. We've had people from New York, Buffalo, Chicago, um, Colorado. What else have we had? All sorts of places. A guy from Scotland last week, various other people around the world. And last week was someone from um, uh, the Netherlands who designed a game for uh, children, which is very, very simple. Met her at uh, BET this year, a phenomenal woman. And she came and did this, uh, the um, presentation for last week. Um, but I think what I want to do now is hand over to Greg, who's going to tell you a bit about where the course came from. Let's just switch over to Greg, and I'll stop my camera, and Greg can introduce things. And I hope, if the audio is working on this computer, can we make sure the audio is working? That would be really cool. So okay, that if Greg... I'm uh, going to try and say something. Can you hear me all right? Yep, that's great. I'm going to stop my camera. Okay, there's a bit of a delay, so I'll, uh, I'll just I'll get into it. There's three things um, that came out of, uh, that, that really kicked this off. The first thing was a student voice. And about two years ago, we started sort of informally uh, looking around for whatever we were doing next. We've done quite a lot of work with digital media in the art department, in the media department, um, and in other sort of spots around the school. Um, and it was a sort of informal discussion with uh, a really sort of top end of students who were desperate to be creative with technology who were continually saying to me for probably three or four years we want to do various uh, interaction we want to get gaming happening and of course we didn't have the skill set to make it happen so um, well I personally didn't but found Roxana through net, uh, a really good network of uh, Adobe educational leaders um, and we sort of threw it at her and I was lucky enough to be working with Ian and we sort of basically pieced together, I don't know, about um, 
half a side of A4 and just said, this is what it could look like. Uh, you in Chicago, the kids at school, and we set it up last year as an extracurricular event. It, it worked for 10 weeks and it was pretty awesome. We, we thought this is fantastic. Um, we brought it forward this year to be part of the Creative Media Diploma, which uh, means it's certified and valued and, and it, 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 it's, it's really good. Um, and that was, just, that was really the, the, the purpose of telling you about that was that the idea of networking has been so strong and so powerful with it. Uh, but really, at the very heart of it, from, from a sort of management point of view to make it work, was risk. Um, creative partnerships were, uh, I was going to say giving away, they wouldn't like me to say they were giving away. We, we, we bid and got um, quite a bit of creative partnership change school money. Uh, and I kept about 10% of it back, um, about 2,000 quid for something and we took a real risk, creative partners took a risk, uh, the college took a risk and it really paid off. Um, and we ended up with a games workshop um, and it's been a fantastic uh, event but I'm going to leave you now to talk to somebody else. So thanks Ian. Okay, so um, James, and James Mickey who's kind of leading the diploma course is just going to tell us about a little bit about how it works now. I'm going to turn off Twitter probably but never mind. Right. So, James, away you go. Okay. Um, my name is James McKean. I'm fortunate to be involved in this project, um, too. It's been really, really, really exciting sort of working with um, Roxana, and um, Greg has kind of pushed me to be uh, as impossible, which has been great. Um, I want to talk about the learning that takes place. Um, the classroom environment is very, very different. It's a very different sort of classroom. Uh, um, mainly because I think um, the discussion that would normally take place in the classroom happens. Um, is my audio coming through? Or is it too loud? Is it okay? No, your audio is fine. Don't worry. I think it's just the quality's changed. Don't worry. Your audio, your audio is fine. Don't worry. Is, is that, that a yes or a yep, no? It's fine. Yes. Good. Yep. I'm going to keep going. Anyway, yep, okay. um, the discussion that takes place, you can see in the bottom left corner of the PowerPoint, um, tends to flow more freely during the lesson than it would if perhaps in a normal traditional classroom. You would normally stop and um, give the students some time for discussion. But even while um, key speakers are speaking, the students can discuss and talk about what they're learning as it goes, oftentimes answering their own thoughts and questions. Um, and we as teachers can answer their ideas. So one of the greatest things I think about this course is that there are several of us um, in the room at the same time, several experts with our own thoughts and ideas, and we can offer the students advice as they go along, um, which is you know, a fantastic experience for them, which they wouldn't normally get in a normal classroom. Um, we ha do have guest speakers, as Ian has mentioned. We had Moses Wolvenstein, who was um, just absolutely amazing to hear talk. Um, one thing that has happened as each session has gone on is that um, the speakers seem to talk for longer and longer. They're so engaging and so interesting, and the students really want to listen to them speak and hear what they've got to say. We even have some of them um, critiquing the students' work, which um, is a really fantastic thing to think that your um, own work is going to be critiqued by a real professional who's um, out there making games. Um, so bringing the experts into the classroom has been really key in terms of what the project um, is all about. Um, one other feature of it is that the level of online co collaboration from the students has been excellent. And it's a really interesting model in which we have where um, they're sitting at home in separate houses. Um, they're then beaming in live from their homes, talking and discussing their work with each other. And the rest of the class is then learning from them in their own homes. And the guest speaker is able to come in and support them and give ideas. I've also done that as um, one of their teachers to help support them in this um, process. But the kids really want to be involved and they want to be like um, delivering the presentations, which is just really, really exciting. Um, finally, I just think that um, the way we've gone about delivering the course and the way Roxana has um, planned much of the um, units that she's um, been pushing them through, it's created this sort of idea of higher level thinking. Um, rather than just um, accumulating knowledge and um, accumulating ideas from listening to the speakers, um, the students have been able to ask questions, which has heightened their questioning skill. Um, they are being often asked to make judgments. We use um, lots of, um, Roxana uses lots of polls to like get their feedback on ideas and things that they think about the games they've been playing each week. Um, they've had to test out many of their ideas in, a, in quite a public forum, and um, they've always been asked to evaluate what they do. 
which um, you know is really high level stuff. So it, it's not just about passing on information. And that has been done. Thank you very much. That's cool. Thanks, James. Um, what I just want to do is just give very quickly, we've just got to finish now, but I want to show you uh, what the course looks like uh, because it's a Moodle-based course. So what happens is when, um, when, I can't remember his name, let me just have a quick look. That's it. When Tom Scott, who used to work for IDOS, used to work on Tomb Raider, comes in, he, do, he, teach, he takes them through stuff. This is basically their Moodle course. They're given tasks to each week. They're given games to play and reflect on. The games they play and reflect on are the games that the speaker next week will have asked them to play. So actually, when they meet someone, they're not just sitting there going, yeah, what are you saying now? They're actually discussing something they've got common ground on. So as most of these people are games designers, they're playing games that these people have designed, or actually even better, games that are half built. And they're saying, you know, how could I improve this game? How would this game change if you took away one of the rules? And there's a lot of formal stuff in there. We record every single week. So actually, if you're a student and you're not there, you can come back and watch the recording. You can interact with it. You can listen to what's going on. Obviously, you can't ask questions, but you can do all sorts of stuff like that. It is really, really, really interesting. And the sort of thinking that's going on here is much, much more um, diverse than what normally goes on. I hear a lot of stuff about, you know, everything's got to be visual and things like that. These kids are reading vast amount of text because they are so motivated and engaged. It's absolutely phenomenal. You know, we can put long academic stuff in front of them about games. My wife was listening to this, and I was kind of sitting in on one of these, and she's like, she's a teacher, and she was like, these are year 10s, and they're getting this? And she was absolutely surprised, she's a secondary teacher, absolutely surprised by the level of stuff they were doing. And it's only because they're motivated, and the games makes it really motivating. One of the really exciting things is that they have, as you'd expect with a diploma, the whole diploma is about real practice, isn't it? It's about re meeting real people. This is one interesting thing. We launched this at Stoke Mandeville Stadium, where the Olympic flame was last held, burned in England in about 19... 19 in the 1970s, I think, because they had to hold the, um, special, the Paralympics there. And... Uh, Bearing in mind the Paralympics are coming to the UK in 2012, these kids have been commissioned and have got a job that they have to make games that are going to promote a disability sport for the 2012 Olympics. That's what they've got to do as part of this. It's not just, oh, wouldn't it be nice if they did a nice game? No, they've got a contract and they're supposed to do this. So it's actually really focusing on what they do. I've never met such a group of more motivated year 10s in my life. And I haven't met thousands, but I've seen enough to know what your average group of year 10s, who may be playing the games that um, Edith was talking about earlier, might feel about things. Um, but finally, if you want to keep going, we haven't written this up yet. This is something that we are going to write up. We are going to do it. We hope we're going to do it justice. Um, but if you want to follow us, this isn't just um, kind of Twitter bait. Oh, let's just get rid of this. Um, this isn't... Uh, oh, come here. Yeah, thank you very much. This isn't just a Twitter bait, but if you want to follow us, Roxana, who couldn't be here because she's busy in Chicago, uh, but runs it every week, she's there. Greg and James are at the Chow Fonts, and we've got a hashtag for this that goes out every Thursday night because we ask the kids to be on Twitter as well, where appropriate, um, and uh, anything we're doing, we follow on there. So I realise I've gone over seven minutes, and we've had a couple of uh, broadcasting issues, uh, but thank you for your patience, um, and if you want a pint, I'll buy you one. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, guys.